Suleiman is a leader that a lot of people seem to enjoy, but he's a leader that I've never really meshed well with. Does that mean he's not good? Well, hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to go over Suleiman and the Ottomans in our Civ overview series. I'll go over their unique traits of the Civ, each leader's abilities, and give them a final overall ranking after talking about how I tend to play them. Before starting though, I want to give a big thanks to everybody. Not only have we reached my 1000 subscriber goal, but we are quickly shooting past it. And I'm hoping to hit 2k by the end of this year, and I'm glad that you guys have decided to come along for that ride. The Ottomans are a civ that are super highly focused on warfare. Their civ ability, Great Turkish Bombard, is the only bonus to siege units in the entire game. You get 50% extra production towards siege units, and you get 5 combat strength to siege units when attacking defensible districts. That's your city centers and your encampments. And this is pretty good. Siege is underrated and is pretty necessary if you're doing late game wars, and the Ottomans are all about doing those late game wars. It doesn't come online early, which makes it not amazing, but it is something that you'll feel the impact from if you time it well. But we're not done. The best part of the ability is that conquered cities do not lose population. They also gain plus one amenity and plus four loyalty if you didn't found that city. So this negates loyalty issues entirely. Usually conquering cities has a pretty large drawback of losing about half the population of that city, which causes massive loyalty issues. But Suleiman doesn't get this problem. This is one of the better domination bonuses in the entire game here, just this portion of it. Because if you take a 12 population capital, you now have a 12 population second capital instead of a 6 population capital. The Ottomans also get the Grand Bazaar, which replaces the bank. And this is something that's often overlooked, but I think it's really good. It gives you one extra strategic resource for every different strategic you have improved in the city. This makes Niter a non-issue most of the time. You also get plus one amenity for luxuries, which you have improved. And what do you need in domination games? You need gold, you need amenities, and you need strategic resources. And the Grand Bazaar is going to make sure that you have all of them with enough to spare. The Barbary Corsair is also one of the better naval units in the game. It replaces the Privateer, which is kind of late, but it is invisible, and it can coastally raid, and it is cheaper and comes earlier at medieval fairs instead of mercantilism, and it costs less to upkeep, so it's like a mid-game longship, and people really love the longship. So if you have water, you use it, and it's kind of like Sinbad, but way less gold efficient than Sinbad. And, but you can have more than one of them affecting the map at the same time. So all of this sets you up for a mid-game domination push. So what do the leaders do? Well, we're going to start with base game Kanuni Suleiman. The biggest thing that you get from Kanuni Suleiman is Ibrahim, a unique governor, the only unique governor in the game. Ibrahim is a governor that you can place anywhere, like your cities or city states, just like Amani, and he buffs your domination capabilities. You can get a 20% buff to unit production in a city, which is no small, no small thing once you start adding in military city-state production bonuses, right? So this is really good. You can get 5 combat strength in the city's tiles, which makes your like border city push really strong. But the best is a 10 combat strength when attacking cities to all units within 10 tiles, making your crazy siege units even crazier. This upgrade really only requires 3 governor titles, and Suleiman also gets a free governor title with gunpowder, which is right where you're going to start your conquering. So Kanuni Suleiman also gets the Janissaries, and these are musketmen that are cheaper to produce, have more combat strength, and get a free promotion in building. They do cost you a population if you build them in the city that you founded. So probably your first couple are going to cost you one or two population like a settler. However, they're free in cities that you conquer. And the cities that you conquer are immediately good because you don't lose any population. Now, musketmen are strong. They don't fall off as fast as uh, swordsmen because... Uh, line infantry are not as is not on as valuable a tech as men at arms are on apprenticeship. So your musketmen tend to last a little bit longer than your swordsmen do, and the janissary is even stronger than a regular musketman. So if you get your renaissance timing down, you will run over the entire world as long as you have some bombards to protect your units. So let's compare all of this to Mutasem Suleiman, also magnificent Suleiman. 
Remember that Ibrahim and Janissaries all come from Suleiman, not from the Ottomans. So by choosing Mutasim Suleiman, you are losing all of those things. You're just replacing it with 15% science and culture in a golden age, and 4 combat strength to all units when not in a golden age, and fighting others who are not in a golden age. Is this as good as Kanuni? I do not think it is. I think it's much worse. It's a lot less reliable. Ibrahim and Janissaries are reliable. They're thematic. They feel very good. And I think overall it's just a downgrade to the Civ entirely. When you're playing as Kanuni Suleiman, you really want to sim and tech up to gunpowder and pop off. You want to spend some early governor titles on Ibrahim. Don't just wait until you're ready to attack so you think you can get unit production, shoot for some early musketmen, two or three bombards, then get that great plus 10 combat strength pr uh, promotion later. Once you're there, you can take out your largest neighbor without any issues at all. So Janissaries are just very strong. Your bombards are going to rip cities apart. Once you get a couple of their larger cities, you're going to get more Janissaries very quickly and take everyone else out. Whenever you take those large cities, make sure you're putting down commercial hubs so you can get the bazaar, have a lot of gold to be purchasing instead of building Janissaries on the front line, and just rinse and repeat. However, if you get this timing too late, it feels very bad, because although musketmen have a longer lifespan than swordsmen, you are close to steal at that point, and the AI might be lying to steal. But when it works, it works amazingly and it feels great. So I'm going to give this Suleiman a B plus because of the potential. But like Shaka, you are so focused on one thing, you can't do anything else if it fails. Mutasim Suleiman gives you that flexibility and is different. You don't want to wait for that renaissance era timing. You want to rush a neighbor down fast with catapults so that you can get an early golden age. Taking out a neighbor gives you a lot of golden or era score. You want to chain golden ages together through war or simming. Or if you want to conquer, you want to bounce golden age, normal age, golden age, normal age. Remember in the ancient era, nobody has a golden age. So you have a free plus four combat strength over everybody in the game. So if you're playing with heroes and legends, get a hero out fast, take a capital and try to hit a golden age off of that. Sim up to a higher tech level like swordsmen, men at arms, get out of your golden age in the next era into a normal age, attack someone who is in a normal age, get another golden age, sim up to the next tech era, which is gunpowder, rinse and repeat. It works. And it's interesting, but it's far less consistent, and just, I like Ibrahim and Janissaries. You do have more flexibility, because you aren't totally packaged as a Dom Civ, but, so, Mutasim Suleiman is going to get a C+. Plus. I don't like playing them over normal Suleiman. Yes, percent-based modifiers are very strong, but it's not a consistent all the time percent based modifier and it's less easy to get than like Scotland's percent based modifier. If you want a percent modifier, play as Zynga or Pericles or the Maya, anybody who's just better than this Suleiman. I'm going to rate the victory types a little differently this time, only focusing on realistic victory paths. Kanuni Suleiman gets an 8 out of 10 to Domination Victories because of Ibrahim and Janissaries being so strong and because they feel so fun. Don't forget that this is a game and feeling is important. Mutazim is only going to get a 6 out of 10 and that's solely because of Great Turkish Bombard and the city not losing population. Mutasim Suleiman is also going to get a 5 out of 10 to Science because of the modifiers and the fact that Dom leads to Science victories naturally. All other victory conditions don't really seem worth mentioning for either Suleiman. Let me know what you think of them down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.